Hello, virtuous thought leaders, scholars, and virtue change agents. My name is Dr. Lisa Marie Portugal, and I am the Leadership Architect. This talk is number one of a three-parter. They're each going to be shorter talks, but the information has some depth to it. So I thought I would break it up and that way you can think about and reflect on some of these ideas and how they might apply to your own leadership best practices. And this, this talk comes out of a book titled Ethical Leadership in Healthcare Theory and Best Practices. That's a book that I wrote, but I left off the healthcare part for this particular talk because the principles that I'm going to cover as far as ethical leadership can apply to any content area or any any business you happen to be in. So let's take a look at this quote. Free thinkers will always seem crazy to those who don't take the time to research. Never apologize for evolving past people's comfort zone. And that's what we want to do as leaders, right? We want to evolve on a continual and regular basis throughout our lives to improve ourselves, of course. And here's the table of contents, my about page, introduction, some of my inspirational quotes, reflection guiding growth as a leader, and leadership connecting to experience. Here's my about page, and I have a question that I'm gonna pose for you that you can think about throughout this talk and the other two that will follow. What is your leadership brand? The most effective and authentic leaders tend to be individuals who are responsive in finding ways to bring out the best in others. Organizations that are successful tend to care about cultivating leaders in the soft skills necessary in effectively leading technical individuals in dynamic environments and situations. Foremost, compelling leaders like yourself stem from a genuine concern for others and a genuine caring for the work. I know I have a concern for raising your leadership abilities and I love my work. Leadership requires emotional investment and connection to the well-being of others. When authentic leadership is manifest, individuals want to be participants in an efficacious community meeting one's needs. Learn how to transform your leadership style and manifest authentic leadership qualities that others will want to follow. So let's take a look at this graphic here, person-centered perspective. At the top we'll start and then we'll go to the right. Empowering the environment, meaningful relationships, champions for change, facilitation and coordination, and agreed achievements. And here are some of my quotes. We must abandon our petty differences and preconceptions of each other and work together to take back responsibility and control of our lives. That last part, I know we don't hear a lot about that in our society and our culture and our nation lately, but that's important. If we're going to be virtuous leaders and we want to help others virtue build in their lives, that's part of taking back responsibility and control over our own lives, not handing control over to someone else, but taking responsibility. The thought manifests as the word. The word manifests as the deed. The deed develops into habit and habit hardens into character. I love that. Executive leadership means confronting one's own hangups and flaws, inhibiting competent leadership, then cultivating enduring interpersonal and emotional expertise. So those are things that we can work on ourselves to raise our own leadership competencies. Okay, so let's take a look at reflection guiding growth as a leader. Management involves developing systems, procedures, and policies to monitor implementation of a plan and direct employees, staffing a structure with employees, and organizing a structure to accomplish a plan. Leadership, however, is attentive to advancing core values and shared culture, leading to a desired future state as well as communicating a vision. While a vision can explain a destination, values and culture outline a pathway leading and guiding others in a common and shared direction. Leadership furnishes opportunities for learning to help individuals develop 
a mindset and abilities to accept personal responsibility over his or her own behaviors. While the researcher, meaning myself, reflects on courses she has taught in the past, she used to tell her learners exactly what to do and how to do it. Many learners have grown accustomed to and do expect this type of control and direction. Manifesting leadership requires one to develop and foster methods to encourage and inspire others to seek inventive approaches to reach objectives. The distinction between a leadership approach rather than a rational management perspective lies in some of these concepts that I just outlined for you. So I brought myself up as an example because we want to move away from just telling people what to do. We want to move more into a virtuous and principle-based leadership model so that they will have the inspiration, the empowerment, and the abilities to seek the answers, to do additional research, to start leading for themselves, and thus eventually leading for others. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so now let's take a look at leadership connecting experience. With regards to relationships, Management deals with gaining more production from individuals to reach objectives, delivering services and goods to stakeholders in a judicious manner. The focus of leadership is to invest to a greater extent on individuals so they can be inspired and energized to achieve objectives. In contrast, a relationship with management is hinged on formal authority and position, while a relationship with leadership is built on personal trust and influence. Highlighting an example, when individuals are in a relationship with authority, both individuals acknowledge that the manager has authority to require employees to be on the job at a designated time or his or her pay can be negatively affected. Alternatively, leadership relationships rely on influence or relying on influence are unlikely to exercise coercion or threats. I know I don't like to be coerced or threatened. The role of leadership should be to one, motivate individuals via challenge and purpose rather than punishments or rewards, and two, to energize and attract individuals. Think about those two concepts. Can you do that? Do you have that skill and ability now? The power source differs with a significant distinction between leadership and management. When a manager's formal position is taken away, do individuals still decide to follow him or her? This concept reveals the true signature of an effective leader. Okay, that does it for this short talk. I took... Um, references, of course, out of my own book, Ethical Leadership in Healthcare, Theory and Best Practices. I want to thank you so much for listening to me and um, obviously caring about raising your own leadership competency. God bless you. Goodbye.